Good morning and welcome to the end of the world. Ushuaia, Argentina. Last night we sailed from Punta Arenas to the world's southernmost city, heading through the Beagle Channel to Ushuaia, Isla Grande, our first ever time in Argentina, the home of great meats, of great wine, the tango and Diego Maradona. We have approximately eight or nine hours to see and do as much as humanly possible and give our first impressions on this amazing, amazing, I, I need to show you what I'm looking at right now. We just got off the ship and the views in front of me, they are out of this world. I'm not being funny, but look at this backdrop. This is an absolutely insane port. It's such a unique place as well. People from all around the world literally travel to here. It's the gateway to Antarctica, um, and we are literally surrounded by Marshall Mountains. As Matt said, we came through the Beagle Channel. It's absolutely stunning. I find it very difficult to describe it, and literally in just a few days, we have ticked off two countries. That is like, honestly, the best thing about traveling on a cruise. This has got to be the world's most beautiful port. Have a look at that. Look at them snow-capped mountains. Even if you're not going on an Antarctic expedition, I would highly recommend walking along here because you can see them all loading up with the provisions and the people from all around the world that are finally hitting that seventh elusive continent but Ushuaia is so much more than just the gateway to Antarctica there are so many hikes around Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego which Ushuaia is the capital of somehow I don't think that this boat will make it to Antarctica soon as you come out of the port it's just full of souvenir shops and people trying to sell you tours it is pretty crazy but you can come out you can walk along the boardwalk and from here it really puts into perspective how big our ship is compared to the other expedition ships and also it's giving alpine ski village now this is pretty cool along the boardwalk you are going to find the sign that tells you fin del mundo it means the end of the world. You're also going to have to queue a little bit. There's quite a wait to get your photo with the sign to pretty much claim that you are the southern most person <laughs> in the world. Well, in South America because there's people in Argentina. Anyway, it's very popular to come and get a photo. This is a really cool touch that not many people know about. If you come into the tourism office, you can come Get your certificate, mm -hmm. get your stamp, and you can stamp to say that you have been to <laughs> Antarctica it's and so Ushuaia. I mean, what did you do it there? That's really annoying. To be very official, I mean, you could bring your passport, but I don't know if then your passport will become invalid. But I've now been, I haven't yet, to Antarctica. <laughs> I really like that. Come to the tourism office and get your Antarctica stamp. I mean, it's not officially in the passport, but we could maybe like cut it out and slip it in. So it's not officially in there and our Paper passport. <laughs> yeah, because we asked someone like, can, can we do our passport? And they're like, if you stamp your passport with this, your passport is invalid. And we would be stuck in Ushuaia for <laughs> the rest of time. Thing. Not a bad thing. The town is definitely a little bit more picturesque than Punta Arenas with them snow-capped mountains behind you, the multi-coloured buildings and basically you're going to head along the waterfront promenade and the main street that goes through the centre. They're really the two main places to check out and you can even see behind me, I don't know why there isn't any information exactly online, but there's this really cool shipwreck that just sits next to the port. Maybe they tried and failed to make it to Antarctica. And this is the main street, Avenue San Martin. You have bars, restaurants, lots of shopping, of course, lots of souvenirs. Um, and there's some pretty cool places that you can stop off, grab a drink and grab something to eat. We found quite a strange place to have our lunch. 
I have absolutely no idea where we are going right now. Cheers. Cheers. So we have figured out what this strange place is. This is Viejo Lobo, which is my, my perfect Spanish, <laughs> which is essentially a local restaurant, the best rated restaurant in the whole town, which is owned by sailors, hence the sailor theme. And we are currently drinking a craft beer brewed mm, in Ushuaia. And I need to try some of the traditional food for this area, which obviously, surrounded by sea, Beagle Channel, is seafood. What do you think of the southernmost craft beer in the world? It's actually delicious. Like, obviously it would be craft beer generally. It's really Ushuaia, good. Is it Ushuaia IPA? I think it's Ushuaia Golden Ale. The there is a Cape Horn. There's also a Drake beer, but they come in bottles. And we thought that you've got to try If you're going to try a craft beer, you've got to try it in the draft. And we actually found out that draft in Spanish, or here specifically, mean is chop. So you need to ask for a chop. Two beer. chop, please. <laughs> chop. <laughs> This one is for here. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Oh wow, it looks amazing. Thank you so much. Gracias. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. We have an absolute seafood feast going on right now. First things first. Unfortunately, that is getting removed. There is no way that I'm trying that squid. So it's going over there. So I have got some fresh breaded prawns, we have some calamari and some fried fresh beagle channel fish. So we're going to put a bit of the lemon on top first. Oh look at that. This I'm is gonna, so excited this, for you. Oh, <laughs> I've just sprayed lemon at everyone in this restaurant right now. But I'm very excited. Let's go straight in. They said this is straight out of, oh look at that, straight out of the beagle channel. Is it really good? It's really good. You can just tell how fresh it is. Piping hot, unbelievably fresh, and these prawns. Your favourite thing ever? Uh huh. <laughs> a beagle channel prawn. Where we'll be going later on a boat trip. Mm. But you cannot come to Argentina and not try their meat, specifically from, probably from the gauchos anyway, but I have cow, so beef, um, and I also have a locro argentino, which is a traditional Argentinian stew made with like beans and like squash. You've got like a huge chunk of beef in there. I'm, I'm very intrigued. There's also like bits of meat inside. Um, here goes. Very hearty. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's good. It's very tender. The beans are really soft and the meat is unbelievably soft. But I also don't really know what I'm supposed to do with this big lump of meat. <laughs> For someone that isn't the biggest fan of seafood, that was incredibly impressive. You are not going to get any fresher than that. Like I said, from the Beagle Channel where we're going to be going out later on a cruise and all of that came to around 25 English pounds which I think is very reasonable for an extremely touristy destination but also on this street lies the southernmost Irish pub in the entire world and if you know us we love an Irish pub we love our Guinness it probably isn't a Guinness here but I've got to try it to say I've been. I mean, look at this place. It doesn't actually look like an Irish pub. No, I mean, it's gone for the, the type of the writing and the style and the color, it's green, um, but everything else is extremely non-Irish. <laughs> This is really cool. It's like a traditional local Ushuaian sports bar that opened in 1951 and its unique selling point is the southern most Irish bar in the entire world. They don't actually have Guinness, but they have an imperial cream stout. Basically Argentina's mm, version of a Guinness and we are sat next to the great man, Diego Armando Maradona. Cheers. I feel like whatever you do in Ushuaia, it's gonna be the southernmost something. Whether it's beer, whether it's Irish pub, whether it's steak, whether it's going for a walk, you're one of the southernmost people on the entire planet, on the entire South American continent. But it's actually very hot. I thought Ushuaia 
would be really really cold being the gateway to Antarctica but it's actually not I could actually probably have got away with a t-shirt today I suppose it is Ushuaia's summer but we are back at the port and we're about to jump on our two hour Beagle Channel cruise which hopefully we are going to tick off a lot of new wildlife. Hola. He's from Queen. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Hey, welcome. And we are off, hopefully, to see some sea lions. This is nice. I can't believe how hot it has got. In Ushuaia, I am down to a t-shirt. So, the Beagle Channel. This is a very relaxing, leisurely little afternoon cruise along the strait that connects the Atlantic and the Pacific and is full of smaller islands from Ushuaia home to lots and lots of cormorants that we keep thinking are penguins. They are imposters, but so far we are yet to find the elusive sea lion. But it was actually called Beagle Channel because back in the 1800s Charles Darwin came down on his ship and that was the name of the ship that he sailed upon. We're actually heading to the Lighthouse Island which you can see behind me which is where the sea lions or the seals are known to hang out. I'm not sure if I can see them or not. I can't see any. I was expecting them to be bigger if that's them but I don't know. We found them. We have Story found them. There is a lot of them and they're pretty angry, pretty noisy, um, a bit gruntly. They, they sound keep a bit, fighting. They sound a bit like dogs. They would like make a weird noise. Um, I suppose you could say they're like sea dogs. When we're coming towards the island, I wasn't sure that we're actually going to see them, but it turned out that what we thought was just a rock were hundreds and hundreds. Can you hear them? That's them fighting. But these sea lions, Argentinian, South American sea lions. They were so funny, they were either sleeping or fighting and they would be fighting over where they were sleeping and then you had the one big male that had like six females sleeping around him so sea lions you are incredibly lucky but then they'd wake up and then you could just hear them fighting the whole time they were so angry So I've decided Molly Go on I'm thinking I want to be a sea lion I didn't know Sleep what you were going to say Each male gets about six, seven women Yeah true But then you have to fight so will you be able to fight your way to the top? If I get six or seven, I can sleep all day. <laughs> yeah. Party or not? Gracias, My thank pleasure. you. <laughs> and we are back in Ushuaia. That was actually a really nice tour, a really nice way to spend two hours of your day. And if you're coming here, I would highly recommend doing the Beagle Channel. We, of course, did it through the excursions on Sapphire. Princess. They have so many options, but we wanted something that didn't take too long so we could explore as much of the town as well. But the time has now come. After five days of sailing, we're going to be getting back on board and heading out at sea for the next seven days to Antarctica. We will be back in Argentina very shortly to spend a few days in Buenos Aires. Our first impressions are great. The food is amazing, the people are lovely, and apparently we've had one of the hottest days ever in Ushuaia. There were literally people sunbathing at the beach but we're about to get on the Sapphire Princess and fingers crossed head down to Antarctica. We'll see you in the next one.